Hello and welcome to Sheila Lives Out Loud. I'm Sheila Munyaga and I'm glad you're on this channel. Please click subscribe and hit notifications to catch up with uploads every Monday. And in this episode, it's all about the art of giving with Team Pankaj. As the impact of COVID-19 touches down across Kenya, it's not just the healthcare facilities that are bracing for impact. The lock-in of several counties that have reported COVID cases and daily curfews have seen many businesses close down. The lucky ones are able to work from home, but a large number of workers now find themselves at home with no work and barely any new opportunities to pursue. And while the right thing to do for now to slow the spread of the coronavirus has been to stay at home, for many living in informal settlements who need a daily wage, staying at home means staying with no meals. A friend recently shared a flyer with me on social media about a fundraising initiative geared at providing care bags to take care of those with no secure form of provision. All it would take to feed a family of four or five for 14 days is only 4,000 shillings. The care bags contain essential foodstuffs, soap, sanitizers and even masks. Keen to know more about this initiative, I met with Pankaj Shah, the managing director of Moyo Holidays and the founder of Team Pankaj. And here's what I learned. As you can see in the background behind me, uh, my team is busy packing food hampers for our slum dwellers in Nairobi and our daily wages. People who are suffering because they don't have a job right now, uh, and we are all facing the COVID crisis. The packing station is a hive of activity, with foodstuffs packed neatly and ready for shipment to different informal settlements across the city of Nairobi. A testament to the incredible support that many have given Pankaj. But what inspired this initiative? This inspiration came uh, from God Almighty for us to be able to do this. I started as a one-man show with one of my staff because we have uh, no work to do being in the tourism industry. And uh, she and I decided that let's start going. So on the 22nd we went to Mother Teresa's uh, home in Huruma. And the sisters told us, uh, let's have a walk down the slum and let, let me show you what, how, how dear, dire life is and how dear life is. And when I went down to the slum, walking down with them, I saw people that already hadn't eaten for three days back then because they, their people didn't have a job. But the beauty about it was that Kenyans were caring and sharing. And that's the beauty about our country. We are always peaceful, we are always united. And they were sharing with their neighbors. So the sister told me, Pankaj, you need to step up and start looking at a way where we can start feeding a few families uh, so that people don't uh, lose their, uh, ang- uh, you know, get, don't get angry, lose their patience with us. And we started this nothing with just 200 hampers on the first day. And look at what this has become, 24 days, 24,000 hampers. The inspiration comes from a lot of prayer. As you will see and you have witnessed, we pray five times a day at the pack house and prayer answers everything. We ask for a little bit and God gives us a lot more. You know? I ask for a finger, Lord, and I get, an, I get two armfuls of everything from God, and that's what's inspiring us. The camaraderie amongst the volunteers in the packing station is infectious, and the crew are friendly and work quickly to ensure that as many packages as possible are sent out to those in need daily. And the support comes from the government of Kenya and all these beautiful people who are my volunteers. We have volunteers at the pack house, we have volunteers in the slums, community heroes, community workers who all work together with us to uh, deliver food door to door so that we don't, we are practicing social distancing, we are practicing government requirements. And this is the beauty about life in Kenya is that people are adapting to new situations and new ways of uh, working every day. Technically, uh, we deliver food to a central place in the slum and people use the uh, hand carts, people use um, uh, motorbike pickups, pick up, people use just uh, boda boda, put in five 
um, loads of uh, bunyas onto the border border and they deliver home to home and everything is registered and recorded so we know every family who is getting the food. We know we start with women and children first, so single mothers and shoshos and babus. Those people get the food first and then we go to the other people who have a job. We have also started creating employment in the slum at such a time. So in Kosovo slum we have 30 boys and girls who are constantly cleaning the slum. We have empowered them with brooms, rakes, spikes, um, slashers, wheelbarrows, uh, brushes. So they are cleaning up the slum. Then we have community heroes who deliver the food from door to door. They are also paid uh, about 200 shillings a day for their volunteer work so that they, can, they themselves can eat too. It's been almost 12 days that I started with uh, Team Pankaj. Uh, business has slowed down. We are three family members in the business. I decided to come and see what uh, Pankaj is all about. I uh, was extremely pleasantly surprised with what I saw, with the professionalism they were working with, how we managed to start doing all the packs, uh, how many they already distributed before I joined. Um, as recently as a few days ago, Pankaj took me to Mother Teresa's home. Uh, probably one of the best experiences of my life. I've never been to such a place where uh, it was quite heavy on the heart for me to see disabled children and how they were being looked after, how these um, ladies in Mother Teresa's home were so graciously looking after these people. Team leader Bombay spoke with me about the work they've been doing for the past few weeks. So here we are checking, uh, uh, checking out and packing chickpeas. Chickpeas are a really great goodness. Can I have something in my hand, please? Um, and we have two date packed about 40 tons of this uh, lovely grain full of protein uh, and um, very good fiber, which is very, very good. And uh, our teams are packing uh, two kilo bags. We put in four kilos in every hamper. And it's absolutely special uh, food for especially people who don't get a lot of protein in the slum. Our hamper is a complete uh, uh, balanced diet in the package. We have energy, sugar, we have rice, we have uh, a lot of protein in the chickpeas, we have got cooking fat and we've got carbohydrate in the flour. Looking at all the food that's coming into the packing stations and the bags that are ready for delivery, it's heartwarming to know that the collective efforts of many who've contributed assure thousands of marginalized homesteads essentials to keep going in these very difficult times. Soon we left the packing teams working diligently to make our way across the city to the Mukuru Promotion Center a charitable trust with trustees who are members of the Kenyan province leadership team of the Sisters of Mercy. But bordering the slum is a ray of hope, the Mukuru Promotion Center. Here, there's a secondary school, St. Michael Secondary School, a primary school called St. Bakita Primary School, a medical clinic with an HIV AIDS testing center, a skills training center and a rehabilitation center for street boys. For now, the center is closed. The corridors and the classrooms are empty. And that's because schools have been closed. But Sister Mary Colleen shared with me on the difficult and toll challenge that many of the students from this center are now facing. Now, of course, the schools are closed, the college is closed, the children are at home. But we're very, very concerned about the children because normally during school time they have one meal at lunchtime. And even during the school time, many of these children, that's their only meal. And now when they're all at home, we became concerned about them. So we started distributing food to them, calling their parents to come and receive the food so that they can have something to eat since the parents lost their jobs on the 16th of March. Now we can't do that alone. So we appreciate very much the partnership with various people and the many Kenyans who've been dropping in donations. 
and these donations we cooperate with the government so that they're given out in a safe way to the people surrounding us here in the pool. And we're asking you, if possible, to join in the effort so that these 300,000 people surrounding us can have enough to eat. Working with social and community workers, on this day, Team Pankaj delivered about 300 care bags to the Mukuru Promotion Centre. Pankaj then spent some time with some of the parents of children who study at the centre with a reminder for them to use the soap, sanitizers, and masks to stay safe. Just like at the packing station, the quiet handover included a prayer, which is usually the anthem of the nation. What I noticed about this initiative was not just the meticulous order, like right from the packing station, but also the request by Pankaj as he spoke with Sister Mary on the more specific needs from the families that depend on this center, considering that this school also assists children who are living with special needs. I'd like to thank so many people who have donated to us, Tim Pankaj, so many people who are donating to us in cash and in kind. Uh, with all the stuff that they are giving us, uh, Tika Cloth Mills gave us 10,000 face masks. Um, all the millers in Nairobi have given us uh, at least two to tons of flour each. Uh, people are donating sugar. People are just coming up and giving us tons and tons of chickpeas. A gentleman in Canada donated 20 tons of chickpeas to us. So it's absolutely fantastic. So, Kenyans, I want you to join hands with Tim Pankaj. I want you to learn the art of giving. What I'm requesting for is 200,000 Kenyans to ramp up, to come up, to stand up, and to shout, and to give just 4,000 shillings each to Tim Pankaj, so that we can rescue the people in the slums while our government works hard against COVID. The art of giving is a beautiful thing to witness in motion, but it's not just for some people, it's for all of us. We're all called to give. And in times of crisis, the spirit of generosity asks us to share. No, demands that we share. Not because we have something extra to spare, but because we have something. And right now, there's several initiatives from well-meaning individuals and organizations. And instead of caving in to fear and feeling helpless, please log on and find one that you can support. Whatever you have to give, it goes a long way. So please, please give. Asante Nisana Team Pankaj for allowing me to shadow you and to be a part of what you're working on and everybody who's given of their time, money and provision. May you be blessed, may you find plenty and Asante Nisana Sana Sana. I certainly hope you've enjoyed this episode. It really was a pleasure to work on this one. Can you believe I was the camera woman all through Billa Tripod? But do I say... <laughs> but as always, please drop a comment below, share this video, and if you haven't already, do hit subscribe and click notifications so you never miss an episode. Until we catch up again, live out loud and stay safe.